find the mass of the solid bounded below by the circular paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared and above by the circular paraboloid z equals four minus x squared minus y squared if the density is given by the density function rho of x comma y comma z. We can determine the mass of a solid in the three dimensional region r by evaluating this triple integral. Before we do this, let's first look at this in three dimensions. Our goal is to find the mass of the solid bounded between these two paraboloids which is this solid here. If you look down on the xy plane, we can see the intersection of these two paraboloids is a circle, and because of this, we will use cylindrical coordinates for the triple integral to determine the mass. Remember, when using cylindrical coordinates, dv is equal to r dz dr d theta, and therefore this is the triple integral that we need to set up in order to determine the mass. To help us determine the limits of integration though, let's graph the intersection of these two paraboloids on the xy plane, which is already shown here, but let's determine the equation of this circle. To do this, we solve the two equations of the paraboloids as a system of equations for x and y. So let's substitute x squared plus y squared for z in this equation here, which gives us x squared plus y squared equals four minus x squared minus y squared. From here, let's add x squared and add y squared to both sides of the equation, which gives us two x squared plus two y squared equals four. And now we'll divide both sides of the equation by two, which gives us x squared plus y squared equals two. We should recognize this equation as a circle centered at the origin where r squared is equal to two, and therefore r the radius is equal to the square root of two. Let's record this on the circle. Because we are using cylindrical coordinates, we need to write the density function as a function of z, r, or theta. So rho of x comma y comma z is equal to the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared. And remember, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This is equal to the square root of r squared which is equal to r. So the density function here is equal to r. We have another factor of r here from differential v, and therefore the integrand function is going to be r squared. Now let's work on determining the limits of integration. We first need to determine the limits of integration for z, and they must be functions of r and or theta. Looking at the three-dimensional graph, we can see the solid is bounded below by the paraboloid that opens up and above by the paraboloid that opens down. The paraboloid that opens up is z equals x squared plus y squared, which must be expressed using cylindrical coordinates, and we know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so z equals r squared is the lower limit of integration for z the paraboloid that opens down is z equals four minus x squared minus y squared. Let's write that as minus the quantity x squared plus y squared, which is equal to four minus r squared, which gives us the upper limit of integration. And now we'll use the intersection of these two paraboloids projected onto the xy plane graph here to determine the limits of integration for r and theta. Because the radius of the circle is square root two, the limits of integration for r are from zero to square root two. And we need to go all the way around the circle, and therefore the limits of integration for theta are from zero to two pi. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. We first integrate with respect to z, treating r squared as a constant. The antiderivative is r squared z. And now we find big F of B minus big F of A, and we substitute the limits of integration for Z, not R. This gives us R squared times the quantity four minus R squared minus R squared. Simplifying here, we have four minus R squared minus R squared, which is four minus two R squared, and then we distribute R squared which gives us four r squared minus two r to the fourth.
And now we integrate with respect to r, which would be 4 times r to the third divided by 3, or 4 thirds r cubed, minus 2 times r to the fifth divided by 5, or minus 2 fifths r to the fifth. And now we find big F of B minus big F of A. The cube of square root two is going to be two square root two. So here we have four thirds times two square root two minus two fifths times the square root of two raised to the fifth power is four square root two. Then we have minus when R is zero, both terms are zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Simplifying here, here we have 8 thirds square root 2 minus 8 fifths square root 2. Common denominator is 15. Looking at the numerators, 40 minus 24 is equal to 16. The integrand function simplifies to 16 fifteenths square root two. And now we integrate with respect to theta, which gives us 16 fifteenths square root two theta, which gives us 16 fifteenths square root two times two pi minus zero. Nothing simplifies, we have 32 fifteenths square root two pi as the mass of the solid. So going back to our graph, we have now found the mass of the solid in this bounded region here. I hope you found this helpful.